Welcome to the Inbound Podcast, your weekly fix to help you grow faster and become an inbound organization by placing the client at the center of everything you do. Hi and welcome to this week's Inbound Podcast. I'm Jamie, I hope you have a great week so far and I hope you're ready to uh, for your uh, weekly fix to help you grow faster and implement the inbound methodology of placing the client at the center of everything you do. Today, I'm very pleased to be uh, co-hosted today with uh, Mike, uh, Sydney Creators Lead Strategy Re- uh, Director. How are you, Mike? I'm awesome, mate. How are you today? Real, real good. And actually, so we're really excited for you to give us an overview of just what we can expect uh, from actually the uh, newly launched inbound podcast show. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And um, really, ex- you know, excited to sort of be going through this. Um, I think it's been born out, really, Jay, of um, a number of things, really, that we see in the agency. Um, you know, so we're going to cover today, as you can see, um, what the Inbound Podcast is going to be about, what you can sort of expect from it. A little bit about us, uh, just so you know who we are, um, if this is your first time tuning in. You may have seen a lot of the podcasts around. Um, we're going to talk about today's buyer because the buyer, your potential customer, if you're adopting inbound, super important, Jay, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, so, definitely, extremely. We'll then talk a little bit about the HubSpot flywheel um, and how we've modified that um, to sort of uh, help clients take it from theory to practice. Um, I think from a strategy point of view, Jay, and I know you from a client delivery point yeah. of view, what you see theoretically doesn't always translate. It doesn't, and you've got to adapt it on the fly. Yeah. So you know that you know the map appears when the car's in motion is quite like what um, So we're going to talk about the post flywheel, and then we're going to do a real super quick intro, not about inbound marketing and inbound sales in, in, in a touch, but what we'll be covering in those type of sessions. So uh, future podcasts we're going to have inbound marketing, inbound sales, inbound service. We talk about HubSpot, and ultimately, if you think about it. What are we trying to do? We're trying to get the message out, which is really how to become an inbound organization. We're going to make some reference to some books later on, yeah. uh, including one with my buddy Dan Tyre um, and Todd Hockenberry, where they talk all about the inbound organization. Because when you think about inbound, people think about inbound marketing. Yes. But it's a lot more than that. No, it's like it's down to sales, service, and obviously the organization as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. So if you can become an inbound organization, that's really where your clients are going to start spending more money with you becoming advocates and your business is really going to grow. And then we're going to share some of these book resources with you at the end. So really that's what we're going to get covered today, Jay. Um, so over to you, buddy. Tell us a little bit more about the Inbound Podcast. So yeah, so uh, just actually before we do get into all of the uh, subjects that Mike did mention, obviously uh, uh, just a quick uh, couple of things. I'm actually just going to mention why we started the show. And then also uh, Mike's actually just going to give us a quick uh, overview of actually the 1630 Digital Object, which is uh, our... Uh, our inbound organization. So uh, the reason why we started the show was every single uh, week in our agency, uh, we always ask such as questions about the best uh, solutions for inbound marketing, sales, service, and also just about the HubSpot system itself. And uh, really, uh, what I, and actually really, uh, the reason why we started the show was we actually wanted to uh, make sure that we got all of these uh, covered and actually we documented them all down and uh, just actually so, uh, so that we can provide pro tips for obviously yeah. uh, the audience as well, and actually, it's not just them obviously asking us and then us answering that's one singular person, but also, as well, actually, and actually, part of the email service and everything like that as well. It is like a public service, uh, which is how we see our podcast. Uh, like I know, actually, you run the open mic, yeah, and obviously, uh, you actually see that as a public service, but actually, that one, uh, from actually from the business side. We actually want to do this one, which is the email podcast, which is just uh, it's a public service around all the marketing sales service and actually, spots at home. It's great, and. Um- I absolutely echo that. And, you know, in the agency, we were talking quite a while about, in our weekly meetings, what type of questions have we had this week? You know, how can we create content better? Um, and, you know, obviously the blog, uh, you know, we'll do email, we we'll do interactive content pieces. Um, and we discipline to follow the inbound methodology that we're going to speak about in a moment. But every single week, Jay, in the, in the client review meetings, it's like, oh, this client's asked this, or this client's asked yeah. that. And, you know, blogging is one medium. The explosion of podcasts, obviously, Jamie mentioned earlier, I run the Open Mic podcast. I've done that since back in 2016. So, you know, four years into that. And uh, we find that that's a far better medium. People are listening in the cars, driving to work, watching on the blogs and watching the videos here. 
Um, so we thought, well, if we could take all those questions, get them answered, uh, and then give you a, like we call it, a weekly fix to get you inbound. Yeah. But the great thing about this is they can also get involved with the show as well, Jay, can't they? Yes, they can. So I've actually got that up here. So obviously, uh, just get involved with the show. And if you've got any access questions or anything like that, uh, uh, you can actually message us on our preferred access channel of Twitter uh, using the hashtag inbound podcast or hashtag grow faster. Yeah, that's great. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about us. This is not a sales pitch. Like Jay said, it's a public service for the podcast. This is what we're doing. Anybody who runs a podcast knows it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of costs, a lot of planning music to get it going. It's not as easy as just turning the camera on and making it happen. Certainly not if you want to sort of grow that following. Um, so why should you listen to us, I suppose? Uh, 1630 Digital, we are a HubSpot Solutions partner. We're accredited by Jamie and myself, the rest of the team, Bex, uh, Gary, Al, uh, Jeff. You know, we're all inbound accredited. We've all gone through certain uh, inbound uh, certifications in the HubSpot Academy. As I say, we are HubSpot agency partners. And the key thing, so what does all that mean? Yeah, it's another badge. And I know what people are listening. Yeah, yeah, just another HubSpot partner. But one thing I will guarantee you ain't a sales pitch. But what I am trying to get across is that we live inbound every single day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, sometimes weekends as well. We're living inbound marketing. We're living inbound sales. We're working with enterprise clients. We're working with small businesses. People who are just getting started, yeah. Jay, aren't we? So a wide, wide range of customers who are facing these challenges with inbound. And so obviously we're figuring these out, applying the skills that we know. So, um, you know, what I'm saying is you can trust us. And if you don't, then you don't have to tune in. You can, you can choose and, you know, lay your ears elsewhere on another podcast. There's lots out there. There's some awesome people doing inbound out there. You head over to people like Remington Berg and yeah. George Thomas, you know, um, you know, impact and uh, people out there are awesome. You can check that out on, on HubSpot Sprocket Talk. is another awesome publication. So we're not here to sell. We're here to share knowledge. Um, and also we'll be getting other inbound agencies on the show to share their experience as well. So our job is to make sure that you guys have um, the best possible knowledge to apply in your inbound business. Definitely. Cool. So, Jay, tell us a little bit about personas and what you think about personas is, because that's the next stage of why they're so important. Yes, so personas are right. One of the first things that actually we do in our agencies when we do take on a new client, because uh, in the end, and I know some might have lead to strategy, so obviously, uh, when I just to further into this topic, I know that uh, you'll be covering this a lot more detail. Oh, okay. but, but I mean, actually, from my side, uh, from my side, especially as a delivery point of view, I cannot even think about delivering anything until I actually know who I'm marketing to. And I'm sure that's what, uh, literally, uh, if you speak to any agents or anything like that, they will all tell you the same thing. And it's a bit like the uh, theater saying, if you sell to everybody, uh, you sell to no one, we need to make sure that we've got that real, real targeted down uh, into the niche, the uh, specific arena that they're in, what they sell, what's the level of product they're at, so what's the level of uh, person you're serving to. It's like if you were, uh, to marketing managers, or if you go to uh, this is CEO, who can actually make that purchasing decision. Yeah, that's actually what. Uh, and obviously, uh, just in closing from my side, it's just it is literally it's the number one thing that we actually do in the strategy section. Absolutely, foundational. Um, you know, if you're out there today, think about it this way: if you're out there today, then you know, say to your team, or you're guilty of this as well. And I use the word guilty. We're not here to dress you down, guys. We're here to give you knowledge so you can take it as practical advice. Where you just put in a post out a social post, you put in a blog out, you know, you may be doing an email and it's not targeted. You do not know who that is going to, who your perfect customer is. Then, you know, whatever number you want to put on this, but I'm going to say 70, 80% wasted. It's going to bounce. It's not going to connect. It's not going to resonate. So here in our agency, uh, one of our core clients is Entrepreneur Eddie. And you'll notice we have them all down in names. We have marketing director Megan. We've got legal law, we've got automotive Andy. Uh, these are all our niches that we work in automotive, we're working professional services, luxury right. lifestyle, high growth service businesses, and we give them a name. So when a client comes in um, and says to us, um, you know, I'm, you know, Mr. or Mrs. X, then that may be the case, and we are personal with our clients. But ultimately, they're not they're an entrepreneur already or an automotive yeah. Andy because we know exactly what presses their buttons. And like I say, so what I want you to think about today, use the hashtag grow faster or use the hashtag inbound podcast 
and use our preferred channel of Twitter. Shoot us some questions. I'd love to know what your personas are called. If you have personas, if you don't, don't worry about it. You can leave a comment on the blog below if you're watching this over. You can head over to blog.1630.com forward slash podcast and put that link in the show notes and in the app. So you can go and watch this video and record it here. And we'll put you on like a, Jay, could you, we, what, do you think we should put like a persona template there that people can download on that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's exactly what we do in our agency. Yeah. Okay. Um, of course, just, we've got like a full blueprint that obviously we actually fill personas out and all the questions and the necessary uh, uh, information that you actually uh, will need to fill in. And obviously, uh, exactly like what you say uh, in actually the workshops as well, it's it's not a quick uh, half an hour job. <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, you can explain into more detail on obviously how much time we actually put into Entrepreneur Ready because it's not just an hour or two hours. You know, I just went into the tens of hours. Yeah, I think, I, I right think it was over 32 hours we put into Eddie, but that were over a period of time. And I don't yeah. want you to sort of think, well, I don't have 32 hours. <laughs> what we're saying is two to three hours getting the baseline, then you're going to interview some customers, then you're going to interview some non-customers, some prospects, uh, and you're going to start to build up that fictional character. But we will do a podcast purely on inbound persona creation, so we'll leave that for another day. But in the interim, if you want to get that free template, head over to blog.1630.com forward slash podcast, and then uh, you know we'll click the link in the show notes below and we'll get that sorted. So today's buyer, in summary, has changed the way that the buyer's changed, Jay, isn't it? So like when I was growing up, we got a yellow pages or yep. you know, we, we'd walk up and down the high street and, you'd look and, and we'd look and we'd find them. We'd have such a limited availability of knowledge and the salespeople were always in control because you were reliant on them. Yep. But in your generation, I it's not like that, is it? I just go to Google, that's all I do. If I ever need any help on anything, uh, I literally just go, uh, the first place, www.google.com, <laughs> searching what I want to search for and then obviously it actually gives me the best actually performing results. Uh, press that subject. Yeah, absolutely. And that's how it's changed. The buyers have changed, the way that the buyers change. So if you're still stuck in that rut, not selling the inbound way, serving it, you know, I want you to do a challenge here as listeners. Think about the last purchase that you made online. Okay? Now I'm not talking about Amazon where you go and just find and click. I'm talking about something that you had to research. Maybe you were researching a holiday. Maybe you were buying a car. Maybe you were buying some, you know, a lawnmower or a washing machine. Doesn't matter. Any household goods, maybe sporting equipment, you know, running shoes. It doesn't matter. Think about that where you had to do that. What did you do? You went to Google, you searched it, you were looking for options, which shoe or which washing machine or which car, what's the best performance? You were searching and consuming information. And then once you've done that, you went further down the line. And ultimately from that point of view, um, you you sort of find com you know companies who can then supply that. Maybe that you buy on price, maybe you buy on availability, and then you maybe reach out to that company and make an inquiry uh, if it's not an e-commerce purchase. Um, think about that. I would bet my shirt that that's a process that you've done at some point recently. Now what I want you to do is use that as the moral compass, and I want you to then look hard in the mirror and say, how do you sell? How do you sell? Do you sell that way? Are you providing content? Are you being found online? Are you providing that information in the middle of that stage to, to help them consider? Yeah. And then are you giving them a, a, a clear action to sort of reach out to your offer? And if you're not selling it, awareness, consideration, decision, and, and adjusting your sales profile to their bias, the way buyers buy it, like you said, yeah. go to Google and go that, then can you imagine how much business you're missing? And if that's not the biggest wake up call for people who aren't doing that, then, you know, it is bold. This show is also, this is the first one. And like I say, it's not here to dress you down. It's not here to tell you you're doing everything wrong. And it's certainly not telling me that inbound is the ultimate authority because inbound works exceptionally well when you mix it with outbound as well, yeah, Jake, of course. Of course. Yeah. Of course, I can't. Uh, obviously, what I've actually seen before is uh, where everybody goes uh, from obviously their actual normal outbound type of business and then they go straight through to inbound and make the complete switch. Yeah. You can't just make that switch. And, that, and obviously, uh, there might be some people actually telling you you can, but I don't think you will see the best results from inbound if you just completely go inbound. I think, yeah, that's just like you said, inbound, it can take eight to 12 to 18 months to then actually come into fruition and actually to build it up. Because literally, that's what it is it's the content, it's the SEO, it's the rankings, it's, just, it's actually getting found organically and then obviously supplemented with pay. Yeah. Obviously, and then if you actually supplement that with a bit of outbound as well, and just then yeah, I think you're getting the best of both worlds. Yeah. Definitely. So even though this is the inbound podcast and we're going to help you become more inbound, don't stop your outbound. If you're unsure whether you should go inbound or outbound, we've got a section on our website, 
versus yeah. outbound. Inbound versus yeah. outbound, and it tells you the differences. But mix and blend. And there's two quick things that I see as a strategist when I'm working with clients. Because people say, Mike, what's the best initiatives? You know, now, you know, big disclaimer here, guys. The, uh, the best initiative does, does always depend on your individual business model, what stage you're at. But here's a quick, quick check. If you're short of traffic to your site, your online properties, your website, your blog, your landing pages, your e-commerce sites, if you're short of visitors, go into content mode, create targeted content to personas. Um, if you have enough traffic, this is the flip side, but that you're not getting enough sales, then we need to look at more conversion techniques, you know, pop-ups, boxes, call to action, offers on the site. So more traffic, content, 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 but not just quantity, I'm talking about quality. I'd much rather have two pieces of quality content going out a week than one, or 30 pieces of content that are rubbish. That are rubbish. Because we see it all the time, yeah. Yeah. Guys, hey, I've got this great idea. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. I don't want to let them down. It's not great, it's just vanilla. Yeah. Bad content has a really adverse effect on actually seeing your business as opposed to obviously good content. Yeah. Oh, obviously that makes sense, but uh, if people say post, 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 if it's all like bad or if it's average content, then it'll actually do more harm posting it than what it will do waiting a couple of weeks, getting two or three pieces of good quality content that actually helps and makes a difference to them. And that's just something that's actionable. Uh, no, no, no. So that's one thing I wanted to add. Content is good when it's also actionable, something that they can take action on. Obviously, when I read content and it's it's a story about us, so something that breaks up, just we always learn from stories. And that's why storytelling is the best form of marketing. It is. But if there's nothing that I can do and take away from that to then apply to myself or my own business or to anything that I'm actually doing, then I just kind of feel like you've wasted your time yeah. doing that. So what you're talking about, Jay, there is just the usefulness yeah. of it. And there's two things that we translate that. That's why it goes back to the persona. What are the biggest challenges? What are the biggest pain points? But ultimately, these two is the double R's, like Rolls Royce, R, R, so alliteration. Yeah which is remarkable and relevant. But flip that the other way, actually, skip that, scratch that, it's relevancy first. It's gotta be relevant to the audience, yeah. and then it's gotta be remarkable to actually solve the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do a lot more personas, but I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Um, you know, shoot us a message, use the hashtag grow faster, use that hashtag inbound podcast, and we'll get those questions answered for you. You can also head, head over to community.1630.com. We've got a totally free community where you can come in and join other people who are learning about inbound marketing. There's no sales pitch in there, it's totally free. We post regular topics, this podcast will be there as well as all the usual channels like Google, Spotify, Apple Podcasts as well. Um, so that's community.1630.com. Join for free, no credit card required ever, um, and uh, you can access more exclusive content there but shoot us that message do you have personas don't yes no sort of and we'd love to know what the names are and uh, share us you know share, share some ideas and we'll, we'll see if we can improve those for you uh, and get those going so as we come out of that jay we hubspot uh what 18 months ago was it inbound 2018 uh, they announced that the, the, the funnel is dead the flywheel is yeah alive, yeah to a degree, yeah uh, Brian uh, Allegan and Dal Shah, the, the co-founders of HubSpot, went on the stage and said the funnel is sort of dead, and then now we're talking about flywheels. Uh, so we edited this in our studio, Jay, a little bit yeah. from the HubSpot version, haven't we? Just, yeah. just talk us through it, and I'll give a bit more detail around it. Yeah, isn't it? And actually, uh, just as before we get started, it is the HubSpot flywheel. Obviously, it's just obviously we have actually edited this uh, to our own uh, style and branding, just actually so that obviously uh, when it's just, we didn't put it on to our website as well, and obviously all of our assets, that it looks like it's from the same family, and yeah. actually, uh, from the same uh, congruency. This is completely credited to HubSpot the flywheel, and obviously we would never try to actually say any otherwise. <laughs> so first things first, that's just that you'll notice, and the first thing that you do lock on the flywheel is the center. And obviously, uh, exactly as I mentioned earlier, Inbound, it's all about putting the client at the center of every single thing uh, that you do. Uh, and then obviously the outer ring from that is marketing, sales and service. Obviously, because actually we market uh, the clients or the prospects, and then obviously you actually sell to them. And then obviously what you do is you actually service them to make sure that obviously they do stay around. <laughs> one step out from that as well, we've got attract, engage and delight. Obviously, uh, that one does come into more of the prospecting side. Obviously, you're attracting uh, the right fit. Uh, buyers and obviously the prospects from obviously uh, your uh, uh, persona <laughs> and then obviously you would then engage with them by actually uh, producing remarkable and well obviously it's relevant and then remarkable content and, not, and actually then obviously uh, delighting them even further which obviously is giving them like uh, stuff that they can actually use in the business like obviously like a checklist on obviously uh, like a checklist on improving 
on improving your business or actually anything like that. So yeah, whatever the problem yeah, is, solving exactly. the challenge and pain point. Solving the problem. So actually, let's actually uh, set away a problem on uh, starting a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is a checklist and actually there is a process to go through on how to start a podcast, uh, whether that means from obviously the actual subject that you want to work through, yeah. to actually uh, the equipment that you need, i.e. literally, and actually the only thing that you do technically need for a podcast is a microphone and actually somewhere to record your audio. Even though a podcast is a, it's a traditionally audio focused medium obviously it's what we're uh, what we are seeing a lot more these days is people recording uh, the podcast exactly like what we're doing now you guys obviously uh, who are watching this on the blog can actually see us actually doing this podcast now and obviously view uh, listeners in the car obviously uh, you can actually watch this as well uh, this is where we've got screens up here we've got obviously uh, later on down the line in obviously future episodes we, uh, which will have guests on this yeah. screen to watch this you can see the guests and obviously we've also got like some decks up like this where you can see Obviously, everything that we do put into the show notes, but you can see us actually talking about that live with obviously everything like that. Yeah, and, and I think with that as well, Jay, with the, the delight phase, the visualization, it's ascending them up, which you've got a customer. Yeah. It's the worst thing that you can do. And I don't see this as much today, but you know, certainly three or four years ago, people would transact the customers. Oh, I've got the money now, I'll and deliver what this, and that's it. But there's a focus back onto the attracting the Yeah, and then bringing more in, but then the churn happens, and you lose the customers, so it doesn't make a ton of sense to look after those, incubate them, wrap them in cotton wool, you know, help them, make it easy for them to buy it again, and then eventually send them up. This is more corporate, but send them up to advocates, so they just recommend. Exactly. You know? And, you know, ultimately, um, doesn't matter how good you are with remarkable content, yeah. it's never as strong as somebody else said, hey, I use this company, they were awesome, I recommend you should not work anywhere else. Just don't do it. You know, that's what you want to get. Word of mouth. Yeah, word of mouth. Word of mouth. It's like outbound. It's still extremely got the place yeah. in obviously today's business market. It's obviously outbound. Obviously great. Obviously when it's actually supplemented in the right areas, it's like salt. You actually do a pinch of it. Do a pinch of it, and it will work really well. Yeah. Same with uh, same with obviously that as well. It just it works in that sense. So so all of that then, Jay, is what you're saying. Um, takes us to the outer ring, which moves them from one stage to the other. Which is the outer ring. And obviously, uh, if you're looking at obviously, a track, obviously, the startup has prospects. And, strangers, sir. Uh, strangers, <laughs> sorry, yeah, on the far left here. Strangers, I just, uh, as a startup has actually strangers that will go over into prospects when obviously they've actually read, obviously, uh, yeah. content that might have actually downloaded yeah. something. Uh, and then obviously, uh, they'll actually, uh, actually turn to clients. And then, the fourth stage only happens if you do the third stage in the previous section, right? Which is delight. If you delight them well enough, then of course they will then become promoters. And it's really like what you actually said in the last section. It's and obviously uh, just adding that it's easier to sell to somebody who already knows and trusts your business. It's, it's no, I can trust. Yeah, obviously no, I can trust, which is obviously what everybody buys from. Absolutely. So you think about how a flywheel works. Forget the inbound flywheel, but a flywheel yeah, gathers speed. Flywheel spins it as a whole, and it transfers that energy. And you know, when I speak to customers and I say, "Oh, my sales team are this, or my marketing team are this, or my you know customer service team are this," but if you merge that together, the three pieces of marketing, sales, and service when it's merged together, and you leverage that, it becomes what we call augmented. And you know, the, the combined, you know, uh, combined combination of all three together are far stronger than they'll ever be in two. Um, here's something else. If you're speaking, and, you know, maybe you're listening as a finance person, or a, you know, maybe a receptionist, or maybe you do just back office admin. You know, everybody's in marketing, everybody's in sales, and everybody's in customer service. And if you can get that through, you will ultimately become an unbound organization where you know the customer service is outstanding. Uh, one of the best customer experiences I've ever had, and continue to have had for the last twenty years, is American Express. Yep. You know, you call American Express, the, the way they answer the phone, the way they listen, the way they deal with it, not only right first time, but the, the speed, that right, the, do, list, yeah. the, the investment, the training. And we're not sponsored by American Express. I wish we were, uh, <laughs> or anything like that. But if you want to know how customer service is done from the beginning of application point to transaction to customer management to solving problems rarely when they happen, American Express, I don't think there's many companies who are close to that uh, level of experience. Not from what I've experienced from customer, uh, yeah. customer service now. But if you've got that, shoot us a message, you know, use the hashtag grow fast in that podcast. Yes. Who is the number one company? That it's interesting to see what obviously uh, the audience has actually got to say on that one as well. Because obviously, 
we obviously like to work with companies who actually have a bit of customer experience. Yeah. So of course we'd be more than happy uh, if you guys to shoot us them over actually shooting obviously the inbound uh, podcast onto Twitter or or actually hashtag grow faster as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Perfect. So going to the next one. So Mike, from obviously uh, Going from obviously the flywheel demo and everything that we've done, actually, uh, we're now actually moving into the first actual uh, real uh, content section of this podcast, which is obviously about in my marketing. So, uh, once we've, uh, and it's just a question I've really got for you here is, and it's actually a question that I did actually get before we actually uh, yeah. started this show. Uh, so, actually, I haven't got this noted down here. So, it's actually so once we've actually done the marketing, how do we use inbound sales to then close them? So obviously, yeah. starting off actually uh, just explaining what inbound marketing is, but then actually once we've done inbound marketing, how would we then make sure and actually know at the right time they are to then transfer over? Yeah, I know it's a great question. It's something I know we get asked a lot. People always sort of have that disconnect between the two. So let's just, before we do that, let's just make sure that we recap the things that we'll be covering in inbound marketing on the podcast. Uh, number one, we'll be doing everything from marketing strategies yeah. on the podcast. We'll have guests on there who have published books. You'll probably see here we've got a ton of books here from Dan Tyre, Todd Hockenberry, Ileana Stareva. You've Mark got the one from Sir Brian Halgan and uh, yeah. Jim Darmish on there. Yeah, and we're going to recommend and put those show in there. So we'll be doing inbound strategies. We'll be showing how to do inbound campaigns. We'll be sharing success stories. But inbound marketing is all about attracting the right person, engaging with them, and then converting them. So we track, converge, convert all the way through um, to, to get there, but obviously serving them relevant to remarkable content that we've done. So here's the drop off, and that's exactly what you're talking about. So we'll do individual sections. If there's a specific inbound topic that you want us to cover, again, should, we're going to keep saying this through the show, especially in the earlier shows. Use a hashtag on our preferred channel of Twitter, Grow Faster Inbound that's Podcast, it. get them questions in. Get in the community, join the community at community.1630.com and we will get those questions answered quicker than the podcast as well in there for you. Um, but we're going to cover every aspect of inbound marketing, from strategy to campaigns to execution to success build, stories to build to pro tips to how to best use HubSpot for that. So this is why this podcast is inbound focused. It's not talking about anything else. It's just really going to make sure that you're an inbound superstar from the marketing. So we've brought that customer in, okay? So what then happens as we then move forward um, to inbound sales is the marketing team's done an awesome job, but then the sales team aren't aligned. So we've got to also talk about what's called marketing to sales aligned off. Uh -huh. So that is where it's not, oh yeah, I've now got a salesperson involved who's just totally brand new shifting that relationship. Yeah. This continuity. And if you look at the great companies and the, the SaaS software companies are probably the best at this. Um, where as you were going through that original stage and you, you know, you've been marketed to and then you've gone through the sales form, inbound sales is not about selling anything. It's about identifying the biggest problem, helping them and diagnosing them. We use a three-pronged approach, Jay, here, as you know, yeah. like we use it like a doctor's surgery. When a client comes to us and says, hey, I'm interested in achieving X or Y. Yeah. Think about when you go to the doctors, what does he actually do? The first thing he's going to do is he's going to give you a consultation. Yeah. Okay. And he's going to sit you down and he's going to start asking you questions. And then he's going to ask you about your symptoms or what you're suffering from. So he's then going to start using his medical knowledge to diagnose that. And then what does he do at the end of the day? Prescribe. He writes you a prescription. He says, walk over there to the shop with the green cross outside and give him this prescription. They're going to give you medicine. And that's what inbound sales is about. That's the best analogy I can give with you guys. Think of it like how the doctor works. So, you know, I'm ill, so I'll book a consultation with the doctor. I get to the doctor. What does he do? He shines a torch in his eyes. He sticks his tongue out. He says, oh, he does all this type of stuff. And then he asks us some questions. And then he's looking at his medical book, so he's using his experience. Think you've got a fever, you know, maybe, you know, or whatever it may be. And then he's got to write the appropriate medicine. And that's what inbound sales does. But they also turn away business. And yes, I said that, write it down. And if you drive the car, hit the rewind button, you will turn away business for what we call bad fit clients. Bad fit, yes. Here at our agency, we've had it, and we've learned the hard way, we've had bad fit clients. They don't listen, they don't do what they should do. They're the own worst enemy sometimes. Yeah. Not all of them, just a small no. few. And um, you know, having a fire client to move them on um, because they'll spend time, uh, discussing the meetings, they don't pay on time, they get in arrears, 
uh, they've got the wrong ideas. They go and ask people who are not qualified. If you've ever heard the term, certainly there's one here in England, and I know this is about all over the world, but having a dog and barking yourself, the higher you as the agency is the expert, and then go and ask the friends. Oh, well, I spoke to a friend about this, that, and the other, and he says this. Well, how is he qualified about this? This guy works as a food processing canning manager. You know, how does he know about that? Exactly. So, you know, these are bad fit clients, and we'll talk about red flags in, in stages earlier. But if you can get past that, Inbound sales then talks about consultation. Yeah. What are you trying to achieve? What is your problem? What is your challenges? What are your pain points? It's a consultative what? approach. It is. And then what you might even get to that stage, and then you, then you can't help them because what they need, you can't really do, or you'd be taking the money. So you've got to be big enough and bold enough to say, I think you'd be better placed with another agency, or I think you'd be better placed spending your money here. Don't go inbound. You need paid. Put all your investments into paid traffic or something like that. Um, but assuming that you can uh, help them, yeah. then you do a goal planning session. And then you'd say, right, what goals are we trying to do? How do we know we're going to be successful? And Jay, you can talk a little bit about leading outcomes and how we measure that and, and things like that, can't you, from analytics from that point? Of course, yes. So from obviously that side, um, when obviously uh, they do transfer over, but obviously to a uh, client or something like that, it's all about actually tracking obviously what's happened and actually uh, setting expectations is the biggest uh, point I can make Massive. in this section. Yeah. And it's obviously what, again, and you know, the reason why we're actually talking about this stuff and uh, that's we know the answers to this is because unfortunately for us, we've actually, well, not actually, no, it's actually fortunately for us, yeah. we have actually had these problems before. We've learned the hard way. Uh, uh, we've actually learned the hard way, which means that we know why, why obviously you don't want to go down that route again. So from obviously that side, uh, going into obviously uh, actual retainer itself and then uh, going into the actual set and expectations side, uh, the best example I can give is around like a uh, blogging or an example for like that one. So obviously uh, we use uh, Databox uh, for obviously uh, all our tracking and analytics. Great company to work with. Obviously, uh, Tori over there has actually helped us actually tremendously. Yeah. Uh, you know, Databox and everything that we've done. So obviously, I'd actually definitely that if you're actually looking for any uh, any analytic company or anything like that, that's a data ball company. I'd definitely uh, recommend. Yeah, and we'll put that link in, that's databox.com, exactly. uh, and you can build your own customized dashboards to track all the analytics Jay's been talking to you about there. The reason why I say that as well is because uh, they actually took us through uh, uh, the actual process in the perfect inbound organization way. Yeah. Actually, to start off as a stranger today, once we got to recommend it by somebody in the uh, group, yeah. and then obviously, uh, we just went through, we became a prospect, uh, we eventually became a client, but not only did we become a client, we have become a promoter of how well we've been treated as a client, obviously with help, obviously knowledge articles, and just obviously the support that obviously we do need. Yeah, and we made the investment to become a data box proof partner as well. So, data box proof partner. Partner. so yeah. yeah. So, so I think uh, from obviously their side as well, not only have we become a customer, we've, been, uh, uh, we've also become an advocate, which means that we're also selling obviously this data box uh, to our clients yeah, because I see it. Which is obviously increasing our uh, client lifetime value and also uh, bringing new customers that they don't even have to bring in because they're bringing them in for. <laughs> Inbound at its finest. Inbound at its finest. So, literally, uh, they are doing it extremely well. Obviously, uh, Pete over there, uh, oh, obviously, started doing a great job over there. So, uh, back to obviously uh, that section that I was talking about, obviously, uh, about the outcomes, the outputs, the leading and the lagging outcomes. So, uh, when actually we do this type of uh, like uh, blocking funnel for campaign, for an example, obviously, uh, the first thing we do is what is the output of the campaign? What is technically what is the end goal technically? So and obviously the end goal for this one is actually to get these blogs out to produce this action. Yeah. This action could be to uh, get consultation booked in, which I know is actually quite a lot of the time a good uh, CTA for the blog because right? they might not uh, actually most of the time they might not even be able to speak to you, but also it might be a case of uh, downloading like a checklist. Yeah. It's actually quite a very to speak to you. So the output is getting the blog out. Yeah. A uh, leading outcome would be obviously some visits to the actual blog. Yeah. How many people are visiting to the blog? Is it early? early? So what we say yeah. is, it's like the early sign that this is working. Leading outcome. It's the first thing that you do notice that happens. And obviously, when you do post a new blog, it's the spiking traffic to obviously that specific page or to your website. So it's just people think, oh well, it's just a, uh, a post a new blog. Let me go on there, read about uh, what it's about, and if it's actually relevant to the market, yeah. it will then work. Uh, next one is lagging outcomes. So. Uh, yeah, similar, similar, ones, similar to outcomes, though, similar, in, in many cases. Similar ones, but it can be used as a different metric. So, obviously, for like outcome, obviously, uh, outcome could be, uh, uh, and then people downloading the actual checklist, checklist or a book of consult. Exactly. Or, yeah. yeah, so it's a lagging outcome would be what happens after uh, the initial spike or the, uh, or actually the leading outcome, which would yeah. be the spike in traffic. 
the, the actors lagging out quite a lot of the time. It could be the download of a, a slash PDF to checklist, but it also could be uh, something like a blog subscribers as well. Uh, it's a lagging outcome. It happens after you post a thing. It doesn't happen straight away. Yeah. So obviously uh, uh, that's from that side as well. Uh, and actually, then you go into stuff like quantity metrics, where it's obviously uh, blog subscribers. Quantity. You can measure the amount of blog subscribers that you've got. Uh, you can go to net new or to total, which is obviously is the new uh, the new blog subscribers you've got. You can actually the last month. So obviously, from posting these four blogs, you've technically gained X amount of blog subscribers. Yeah. Scrolling down, and then obviously you can see deep dive into more. Well, obviously, it's, uh, it's leading in the lagging out from fire, like doing it by source. Like we posted a blog, and uh, I just wanted to know where the traffic comes from. Did it come from uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or actually, uh, did it come from the LinkedIn and Instagram bio, or actually, did it come from paid traffic, Google, organic, organic, or just whatever? And then obviously, we move it into the quality metrics, so. which is the most important one when you're in there because quality, yes. you know, A, we can get a thousand blog subscribers, not difficult, but. Yeah, keeping, not them, engaged. keeping the blog subscribers, yeah. keeping them, and also if they are not engaged, then technically it's better to have 20 engaged uh, blog subscribers rather than 200 non-engaged uh, content subscribers, because awesome. at least they're actually engaged. So it's a quality metric, uh, so that's a quick example that you can give is that bounce rate. Yep. Bounce rate is probably one of the leading quality outcomes, because obviously, uh, actually somebody Special comes to the blog. Exactly, if you've got, yeah, because if actually somebody comes onto the blog, they uh, like to read the first line of something, then they hit uh, straight off, it'll pass as a balance, which means that the content wasn't good enough or it or, or actually wasn't valuable enough for them to stay. And it might not be the fact that it's not valuable, but it also could be that it's just completely targeted to the wrong people. Yeah. Could like, be. Uh, like obviously, like obviously uh, we have some massive Evertonians. Yeah. If I then to click a link which says like it's a Liverpool Echo or something like that, which I know uh, uh, have an Everton column, if, uh, if I click that link and it then uh, takes me to the Liverpool's greatest ever season, <laughs> Unsubscribe. I'm, I'm, I'm unsubscribe and I'm going to click straight away because I'm genuinely not interested in that content. Yeah, and that's a little bit like the Yankees and the Red Sox. Exactly. Uh, yeah. the States yeah, and things sales. like that. You know, so, you, you know, it's, it's targeted. And, you know, I know we're bouncing about a bit here, but inbound sales is that you, you've got to really make sure you can help them. And that's a great analogy, Jay, using the data box thing. Thanks for sharing that. And we'll, we'll do another session on data box and dashboards. Uh, data box is its own podcast alone. Yeah, that'll be its own podcast alone. Um, and we'll do some content around that as well. And so think about inbound sales, they're the right fit, they're the right audience, you've got them, you've goal planned them, you've, you've, you've figured it all out. You're now in a position to, like the doctor, to write that prescription. I know if you want to achieve this Mr. or Mrs. customer, um, we need to provide these services. It could be paid traffic, it could be on-bound, it could be all right. And that's not just us. We're using our business and our agency to give you an example. You know, if you're, a, if you're a garden maintenance company, for example, you might go out and the guy says, I want my lawn to look like a bowling green. And you know, there's molehills all over it. It's not just about mowing the grass and rolling it. You know, you might have to dig down, do a pest, pest control treatment, you might have got drainage in new soil. At least you know exactly what's needed so the outcome is expected to the customer. And that also allows you to quote the right price. Uh, because if you've ever been where you quote, you think you know what you're doing, you quote it, customer's expectation wants more, then you end up putting it right, you end up losing money on the job, you get disgruntled, the customer's unhappy, it just doesn't work. So doesn't it make sense to use the doctor's analogy in inbound sales to know, that, know exactly what the issue is and then write the right prescription? Profitable, happy customers, and you move forward. You might deal with less customers, but you'll deal with happier and more profitable. Absolutely. So that's how we move in inbound sales, and we'll be doing stuff on that as well. And um, Jake, we talked earlier about inbound service, yes. didn't we? Uh, and things like that, about really looking after them. I know you obviously as our client success director here at the agency. Yeah. What do you think the most important thing is to sort of uh, look after customers? You know, when you're doing project management calls and things like that. Yeah. Well, the biggest thing I actually say is, and I, I did actually mention it in the last episode, it is setting expectations. It's not over-promising and under-delivering. It's actually uh, promising what you can deliver in actually the uh, in actually the specified time frame, and then obviously over-delivering from that point. Yeah. So obviously, it's easy. yeah, exactly. And obviously, uh, like I did mention in the last section, and actually, uh, this is a section we've got, and I will uh, keep on mentioning it because it is genuinely important for this section. We've gone through that before, where. Me, oh, and obviously, actually, my job role, that is literally, that is uh, my job role, uh, getting the delivery out and actually uh, managing, obviously, through all the retainers. If I overpromise something, and then obviously I can't get it done by then, it, obviously, yeah, it looks bad on myself, but it also looks bad on us as a company, which means that, obviously, when obviously, uh, they do come up to renew, or actually something like that, like, they're less likely to renew if, obviously, I can't manage yeah. their expectations right. 
So, so, so the number one thing is managing managing expectations before you even think about uh, like obviously uh, delighting them or if you even think about uh, uh, giving them uh, uh, giving them that wow factor. Yeah, it's just setting expectations to make sure that at all times they know exactly what they're going to get, and then it's just from that point of view. Once they know what they're going to get, that's when obviously uh, we can do our job as actually uh, as actually the professionals, and then obviously over deliver from that part, over deliver from that part, and selectively choose parts to over deliver where they need it to be over delivered. Perfect. So think about that flywheel example again, an inbound service. You might be saying, well, attract, engage, delight, but you've got to attract their attention, keep them on track, whether it's project management systems, regular updates, regular phone calls, yeah. keeping them there, setting that expectation, engaging with them. I know you do weekly calls, don't you, with clients? So we could call every Wednesday. Yeah, and, and I would encourage you as, as listeners, if you want to become a true inbound organization, you know, how are you keeping your customers? How often are you speaking to them? Now, if you're Sky or Google and you've got millions of customers, that may not always be possible, but you can help them self-serve. Nothing more frustration trying to find information uh, to, to enhance your purchase. Yeah. Maybe you bought a lawnmower. We talked about garden guard maintenance earlier. And, you know, you maybe need a part for it and you have to ring the customer service. But guess what? They're only open Monday to Friday, nine while five, and you're cutting the grass when? Saturday, Saturday morning. <laughs> so you can't cut your grass. So wouldn't it be great to have a like inbound service comes in with help something so you can go online, like a, a mini Wikipedia page, so you can give them all the handbooks, the order, the parts, knowledge bases. you know, knowledge bases, live chat system, so you can engage with them on their terms, and that relieves the pressure on your own customer service team. And then delighting them, doing NPS scores, listening to where you're doing well, not doing so well, course, yeah. and you can learn from that because that allows you to improve. And that's keeping the client. So that's a little bit inbound service. Again, we'll talk more about that when we do more podcasts in and around that sort of uh, area. So before we move on to HubSpot, what we've covered so far really, what this podcast is about is why we started the inbound podcast, because we believe it's a public service to really get that information out, yeah. share this knowledge. Um, we talked about today's buyer and why that's central to the inbound methodology. We talked about the flywheel, and the flywheel works through inbound marketing, inbound sales, inbound service, and different examples. So you can use whatever software that you want, but you are going to have to get technology focused. If you're not in digital transformation mode, no. if you're sat there saying, hey, I don't want to be using anything, I still want to use my pad and pen, and this, that, and the other, then you know, inbound's probably not going to be for you, because it relies on technology, it relies on automation. As a HubSpot partner, we only use HubSpot, yeah. period. Why? We used to be Infusionsoft partners. And a great shout out to the guys over in Phoenix, Arizona, especially Jeremiah um, yeah. uh, over there. A great, great guy, uh, Jeremiah Rosaki. If you haven't checked out his content, go and check out jeremiahshark.com. As in shark, S H A R K.com. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an awesome guy. Um, but Infusionsoft was one tool, and then we had to buy lead pages, and then we had to buy co scheduler, and then we had to buy Zapier, and we had to buy all these other tools to try and get a full stack. And we eventually we migrated away because of the, the way our customers were going, we sold the markets. And that's no disrespect to Infusionsoft, it's just that it didn't serve the way we were moving as a business. So we found HubSpot, and we love the mentality of their software. They invented the inbound methodology. Yeah. We can do marketing, sales, service, we can do integrations, we can do e-commerce, there's all sorts of different things. It's tech stack, it's it's, it's all in one system, it's all in one system. Yeah. Now, of course, you can still plug other things like Shopify or Eventbrite into that and other and Zapier and things like that, but it's less likely. So whilst HubSpot's price point is slightly more expensive than others, when you delete when you all the other tech stacks... When you add it up, like if you've got... Yeah. Actually, like a just for example, like I know actually uh, I have to direct access to making actual strides in that. Uh, yeah, they are doing great uh, work. They're actually doing the landing pages now, which obviously they didn't do when I just re-migrated, uh, which is actually one of the reasons why we migrated. Uh, because I just didn't want to have to connect the lead pages uh, for obviously Infusion stuff, but now obviously they do that. But then again, obviously with HubSpot, it's just it's all in one stack. And obviously uh, when you take it out and you strip it back, uh, uh, if you had your CRM, which is a central path, you then have to have an email marketing section, which obviously you can use MailChimp. You had to have uh, uh, landing pages, which is lead pages. You could then have to, uh, like an e-commerce store, which I uh, Shopify also will comments, which would then mean you either need a WordPress site, yeah. which is an actually if you can't, and then obviously you need everything. Uh, uh, More things to go wrong. Surveys, you can have opt-in or, 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 or like it's just a survey model. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. anything like that, yeah. Have from Google Forms, and it just, it's all connecting into one, which obviously all through Zapier, and then, 
uh, take it or if you have uh, any other linking software that you need. And it's just about you said, there's more things that can go wrong. So obviously it does actually get, you actually spend more time fixing the things that do go wrong because it is technology. It does go wrong. It will never stay 100% all the time. Sometimes it goes down, uh, even at HubSpot at times. Sometimes systems do go down in HubSpot. Yeah, of course you know. It's just the same in every single technology platform. We have it with Infusionsoft. I've actually noticed it in SharpSpring. I've noticed it in uh, MailChimp. Things do go wrong because it's technology. Like a server in Australia might be down now, and then we might not have emails for an hour. But, but that, that's just how it goes. But uh, it's less likely to go wrong when it's all in one, one system. And do you yeah. know what I love about it, Jay? And this is, you know, obviously, it's rare I get excited about technology, mm. but the, the simplicity of HubSpot is a load of free tools. I said yeah, to Australia, free tools. Show, this is not a sales page. You can go to HubSpot.com, you can sign up for free, free CRM, free marketing tools, free sales tools, free service tools. Yes, of course. They don't do as much as the pro version. No, of but, course. And the, you can go you know, into hundreds and even thousands of pounds a month with HubSpot based on your business need. If you're enterprise, if you're a major, oh, yeah. globally floated NASDAQ company, you're going to need more features than if you are a solo kind of flying solo. You just need the basics. So you can head over there. If you want to learn more about it, we do have various content. Jay, you run a channel called Inbound Snapshot where yeah. it'll, it'll show you some free uh, uh, pro tips. Like free tips, tricks. But what I ultimately like about it, Inbound, as we know it today, was invented by HubSpot. It was. Brian and Darmish, it was. the no. co-founders there. Invented the methodology and then they built the system around. And, you know, and then it's designed. So it's a little bit like you know, the people who invented the product, they are constantly ahead of the curve, constantly innovated, and, you know, as a publicly floated company in the States, you really invest in, and then look after the community as well. Yeah. And, you know, you don't have to just listen to this podcast. You, once you sign up for a free account for HubSpot, you can go into uh, the HubSpot Academy. There's every type of course you could do from the about marketing, sales, service. CMS building. You can website do building, pay traffic, traffic, content yes. SEO. Social SEO, it's... Full training center as well. So we highly encourage you to check it out. If you are naturally interested in HubSpot as a tool and you need something a little bit more of it, we offer a free no-obligation consult using the inbound way to do that. Um, and you can just click the link on any of our sites to do that if that's something you want to do. Or join the community at community.1630.com and we'll get those questions answered for you. So HubSpot is our weapon of choice, our tool of choice, our, our palette of choice, if you want to call that, uh, to do that. Um, and I think everything that we do, do really in this podcast going forward, regardless of the subject, Jay, we want to move it to become an inbound organization. Yeah. Um, if you could put the client at the center of everything that you do in your marketing, in your sales team, in your client service team, from the janitor all the way up to the CEO, uh, you're going to see some serious movement in, of the needle in your business. Uh, and it might not be, you know, click of a finger and tomorrow, it might it take time. Be. Yeah, yeah it, won't it, won't take time. it won't be because that's what the inbound mm -hmm. way is. But this needs, you buy it. If you're a marketing manager listening to this, you know, um, you know, I hope you get some value and you're excited about what's to come in the podcast. Um, but if you're a marketing manager, you know, you're going to need your CEO or your mm -hmm. MDs buy it. Not because we're saying that they've got more authority than you, you're, you but it's a, it's a top-down initiative. Yeah. You can't have the marketing manager or the marketing assistant or the sales manager or the sales director driving this and then the CEO not having to buy it, or the FD not having to buy it for the long term return investment. So this is very much like, imagine that the business was moving office. Can you imagine the discussion that being the ballroom? Right, we've got to find a suitable location, we've got to have expansion, car parking, cost, financial budgets. We may or may not need a commercial mortgage to buy the building or underwriting for the rent or the bond. That's a big decision, and inbound is exactly that. Doesn't mean to say you can't get started small, um, no. But if you're trying to become the inbound organization, you need top down buying, um, you know, for the people who make the decisions because there's financial investment, there is time investment, there is people investment, operational investment, marketing sales, governance investment, yeah. there is systems investment, oh, you know, and that's not just in finance, it's time as well. Um, so it's a shift in thinking. That's what I want you to do. If you take anything out of this and, you know, one of the questions I know we get asked, am I ready for inbound? Yeah. You know, my my reply is: Are you ready to take it? Are, are you ready to have a shift in business thing? mindset? Yeah, mindset change, perfect. And if you are, then inbounds the way. If you're not ready to go with a full shooting match and you just say, "Hey, I want to tip my uh, dip my turn to what we're just inbound marketing to start with," then start with marketing, see how you go. Boss that, get that right, work on those skills, start then maybe move it into your sales team and later yeah. Yeah. You don't have to commit to become an inbound organization day one, but you do have to commit to that shift in thinking.
because it will ask you to do things that you may be a little uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. So that's that. Anything you want to add on that inbound organization? Yeah. Okay, from that side, it's literally interesting. One more question that I have got, which I think actually we did partly cover, but I think yeah. we do need to uh, go a bit deeper yeah, sure. that one. Just the question that I did get uh, uh, before the show is, what is actually the advantages of being an inbound organization over not being an inbound yeah. organization? Well, again, different businesses have different um, sort of takes. Um, I think the biggest advantage is if you have got, let me, let me show you some symptoms first, and then if you can recognize any of these, um, I think then, you know, you will be um, ready to sort of understand what I'm going to say more. So if your marketing ain't working, if your sales team aren't closing enough profitable deals, if you've got high churn yeah. in, your, in your customer base, it, it may not that you're doing anything wrong. It may be that you're just doing what you've always done. Mm. And guess what? The world's moved on. People buy differently. People research differently. And if you are not adjusting and pivoting your business to the way your customers buy, then you're going to be missing out. That basically means you're going to have to spend more marketing budget to get less return. Yeah. It means your sales team are going to have to put more effort in to close less deals. And it means your customer service team are arm wrestling and fighting your customers with discounts to keep them over getting referrals. So if any of those symptoms sound relevant, then it's probably time that your organization, and I'm going to be direct because I'm not here to pat you on the back. I'm here to give you a wake-up call if it's right for you. And if it's not, then it's not. But, you know, it might be time to start thinking to go in there. So let's do some of those advantages are the reverse of that. And as you talk about what that reverse looks like is, do I want to maximize my marketing budget to get the absolute best return? I'll shoot you a question out there. Who wants more return on the marketing budget? Yeah, it's, it's a yes, isn't it? You know, so we start to ask questions, you know the answer to, to a degree. Who wants to feed highly engaged uh, prospects, marketing qualified leads into the sales team? So the sales team have just got to coach them and ease them through a process where the client consultant stays birth. in consultant, yeah, consultant, they stay in control, where they just, if your sales team are getting that point where it's, so Mike, so Jane, how do we get started? That's what you want more than the sales team having to say, well, do you want to sign the order? Or, you know, maybe not as blunt as that, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, could, could we get your business? If your sales team is having to close business, you're probably not selling the inbound way and you're certainly not selling the way people want it. Today, because again, I asked the listeners who wants to be sold to, who wants to be closed? Nobody, nobody today, absolutely nobody knows, nobody, wants to <laughs> nobody knows that, you know, nobody wants that. And then, you know, if you look at the reverse of that in inbound service, if you're getting referrals coming through your email, your phone, your Slack, your, your text message, websites, you know, uh, you're getting calls from customers who are saying, Hey, you know, Jamie referred me to you, said you do a great job, I really love, love, love to become a customer of yours. Yeah, that's there, the reverse of those things. So is inbound right? So there are the symptoms and there are the other sides of it. But ultimately, if you want to grow, you want to grow online, you want to become a market leader, you want to become an authority, you want to be that company, it will take time. I'm not guaranteeing you will become McDonald's in the fast food business tomorrow. But if you want to become an authority in the industry, you need to create content, you need to be trusted, and you need to serve your customers. If you're in that way, we want to go on a growth curve, we want to become an authority, eventually become rank, you know, the number one or one of the top three or four companies in the industry to do that. You know, um, you know, think McDonald's fast food, think Black Fizzy drink to Coca-Cola, think Safe Cars Volvo. You know, they're global brands that's been built upon yeah. hundreds of years, well, certainly 50 or 100 years. Uh, but, you know, if you look at other brands that have just become known over time, over time, over time, um, there's a great section just in the Marcus Sheridan book here, we'll share with you at the end, um, which is there, she went to, where he, he was a swimming pool company and it nearly went out of business and he turned it around, he was an inbound. There's a great recommendation in there. So if you want to go on a growth curve, you want to grow, you want to attract more customers, get better, better, you know, better qualified leads, close better deals and keep better customers and grow and align your business to the way buyers buy inbound is probably going to be something you should look at at least yeah. and explore. Of the advantages I think then become self-explanatory. Do I want better qualified leads? Do I want better returns? 
Uh, am I ready for that? If you're ready to invest in time and budget, then inbounds have you go. Loads of free resources on, uh, you know, on the HubSpot blog, on our blog. Uh, you can see that at blog.hubspot.com. It's a separate sales, marketing, service blog, as well as you can get it on ours at blog.1630.com, plus in our community and through this podcast. So, you know, the advantages, I think they says speak for themselves, Jay. Yeah. Are you ready? That's up to you. If you're wanting a quick fix, go to paid traffic, but you will always have that needle in your hands. You know, you always have that needle in your arm, and when you pull that needle out, you go, it's not, you get that you withdraw, you get that cold turkey, and the, the advert stop showing, and you stop doing that. So, if you need that quick fix, maybe you wait into that way. Um, but different businesses, different circumstances. So, hope that covers it, Jim. It does, and that, that's, that's great. So, obviously, uh, that was actually it for obviously the uh, main content part of that yeah. show. But, uh, it's what you can expect that's coming. Exactly, yeah. Actually, before we do wrap out on the show, uh, we have got a couple of actually uh, book recommendations from obviously what we've actually spoken about earlier on. So obviously on uh, in my marketing and sales service. Uh, we've also got a couple of different uh, versions in there as well, uh, just for great examples of actually people who use uh, the uh, uh, methodology. I obviously Marcus actually to share so like I can see at the bottom with yeah, uh, the book, answer, yeah. which is this book here from Marcus uh, Sheridan. We'll put the links to Amazon on there as well, so oh, you can go and get those. Of course, yeah, we'll put the stuff. links to all these books. Yeah. So what we recommend, public relations, is it still valid today? Definitely. Yes. Uh, I interviewed Ileana Stariva uh, on the Open Mac podcast a while ago in 2019. Uh, it's how to do PR, the old-fashioned way, but the new inbound way, if that makes yes. sense. Um, you'll see these are part of a series. Uh, Brian Signorelli was an awesome guy at HubSpot, worked for HubSpot in the sales team. We built the, he was one of the leaders to help me grow up to 100 million plus. Um, he's done on inbound selling that we've talked about. Uh, my buddy Dan Tyron and Todd Hockenberry again interviewed these on the Open my podcast, Inbound Organization. There's some great work. So if you head over to the inboundorganization.com, for our UK listeners, organization is with a Z because it's spelled the American way. There's some free resources that Dan and Todd have on their landing page. And then inbound content by Justin Champion. Justin is one of the uh, uh, coaches in the HubSpot Academy. Um, it tells you about how to create content the inbound way from the marketing point of view. Um, so again, we'll put those links. These are the inbound series. Highly recommend you go check them out and get them as a book. And Jay, you've got a three there as well you can cover. Of course, yeah, obviously. But the inbound marketing by obviously Brian to Damesh. Obviously, no better place to learn about the inbound uh, methodology than actually uh, have people who actually invented the actual inbound methodology. So obviously, that's a good one from that side. Uh, we've got uh, the SQ answer by Marcus Sheridan. Obviously, uh, we'd actually mentioned that uh, earlier on the oh, last yeah. part of the show. Obviously, uh, how we use the email methodology to turn around this uh, struggling social and business into a great company. Yeah, a leader, a leader in his field. And the other thing well, about that as well, if you're struggling how to segment your content, Marcus has his big five uh, and his credit sales line, which is Marcus's yeah. company as well. Uh, he has his big five. Um, such as like create content about how to pricing reviews, mm. you know things like that. Yeah, content, yeah. And, and segmented content to answer your customers' questions uh, to to get more visits and more organic rankings. So that's an awesome book. We recommend that to all our agency clients. Yeah, yeah. And then actually, last one is obviously Smart Reverse. Obviously, we work extremely closely with HubSpot uh, uh, during the early days from that side as well, which is using the sales acceleration formula. Which again, a great book. It's in. Uh, it's endorsed by people like obviously it's David Beam and Scott, who obviously we've actually spoke to before. Yeah. It's also in uh, Professor Tony Robbins as well. Obviously, you don't get a uh, Tony Robbins' endorsement if it's not actually good and useful. So, Mark was Chief Revenue Officer at HubSpot, helped them grow from zero to 100 million, million. Uh, from there, now a professor at Harvard. Uh, that is a study book. If you want to learn about sales, and you can show you how to recruit, the type of yeah. people would best suit it for your business. So these are some resources that we put out there. There is a ton of other resources. We'll oh, share cool. those over the period in the podcast. Uh, we'll probably do that every single week and every show. We'll actually probably recommend uh, some books around up through the subject that we are talking about on Monday. So uh, Perfect. Yeah, so there's some resources. Check that out. And just before we wrap out, guys, we really just want to sort of thank you. Um, you can learn more about the Inbound Podcast. It's a brand new show. This is episode one, season one, episode one. Um, but we're serial podcasters, so we're going to be uh, dedicated to producing this to a high level and giving you relevant, remarkable content for what you want. Don't forget, you can get involved with the show. Use the hashtag on our preferred channel, Twitter, using grow, hashtag grow faster or hashtag inbound podcast. Leave a comment below with your questions. We'll get those answered in a future show. You can listen to us. You can download the Go Inbound or the Inbound Podcast app. Use it. Look for this icon in the chart in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, yep. or Spotify, or you can go watch it at theinboundpodcast.com and you can go from there. Um, so from my side, Jay, I really enjoyed sharing what we're going to be doing today. 
uh, what's going to be coming on the Inbound Podcast. Uh, final thoughts from you? I say it's great. So obviously, uh, as actually this is obviously the podcast that all of us that I've been hosting with yourself. Uh, like I said, obviously, thanks for joining today. It's been Absolutely a great, awesome. it's been a great show, and obviously, what we've done is we've actually just explained obviously what's actually to come in this show. Uh, the shows normally probably won't be as long as this one, so actually, if you're trying to keep them between 25 and 40 minutes, just like a uh, like a quick burst. Obviously, for the first show, we needed to get out obviously yeah, uh, what we're going to be doing on this show. So uh, uh, that's it from my side. Thanks for joining us today, uh, and obviously, uh, also a big thanks to uh, you guys for listening. Uh, that's a wraps up today's show. You can actually, uh, like Mike said, you can uh, search us all on obviously uh, Apple Store, Google Podcasts, uh, Spotify, uh, anywhere that you can get podcasts on. We are more than likely on them channels. Uh, SoundCloud, just, Stitcher, yeah, just, just obviously searching uh, the Inbound Podcast from that side. So that's it from us. Uh, uh, I hope you have a great week and I hope you just go inbound and just grow faster. And we look forward to catching uh, up with you guys in the next episode of the show. Thanks. You have been listening to the Inbound Podcast. To learn more about the show and access the resources we have mentioned in this podcast episode, simply visit theinboundpodcast.com. Visit the podcast section and subscribe to receive exclusive content. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to catching up with you on our next episode to help you go inbound and grow faster. This podcast and associated material are published under copyright to Jamie Midgley. All rights reserved, no reproduction of this material is permitted.